The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of Matt Sorger Ministries. He wants it to be when you wake up in the morning, your feet hit the floor and all of hell shakes and says, oh no, they're awake, oh no, he's awake, oh no, she's awake. And there's a rumbling that goes out in the realm of the spirit. Somebody show us an answer. We are in need of a savior. We need an awakening, a fresh anointing. Open our eyes again. Show us the power. The anointing is the power of God in our lives. God doesn't want you staying at the same level of His power. He wants you to go higher. He wants to give you more. On today's program of Powerful Life, we're going to learn how you and me and all of us can increase the anointing that God has given to us. I love it, you know. <laughs> Bible talks about, you know, prayer clouds and handkerchiefs and taken from the body of Paul and how, you know, went and healed the sick and cast demons out. You know, clothing can capture the anointing. How many realize that? Your clothing can capture the anointing. If they could put aprons and prayer clothes on Paul's body and, that, and those clothes absorb the anointing and then wherever they took those clothes, sicknesses were healed and demons were cast out, I'm telling you, it's, it's real. It really is. Yeah, if you have like an unsaved husband or wife or loved one or something, take a pair of their shoes and bring it to an anointing service. <laughs> and just, you know, soak their shoes under that anointing and then sneak them back in the closet and watch what happens when they put them on. <laughs> I, would have, I would have loved to have shown you a video of our ministry in Taiwan a little while back. Um, we were just talking about, you know, this. We were just talking about prayer clothes and, you know, transferring the anointing and all that. And, I mean, the people the people were so radical in Taiwan that as I'm talking about it, I mean, they made a mad rush for the altar, almost collapsed the whole platform. And all of a sudden, people started taking off their scarves and shoes and jackets and extra shirts, and they just started throwing them through the air at me. I have it on video. We have it on our YouTube channel. You go to YouTube and look at Taiwan. Just put in Taiwan, Matt Swagger, and you will watch prayer clothes flying through the air en masse. And we got a whole pile on the platform, and I just, you know, laid my body over the pile, and then they started throwing more on top of me, and I was totally buried. It was glorious. It was glorious. I love it. I love it when God invades our space. I love it when, when his glory invades his house like Solomon's temple to the point where they couldn't even stand to minister because of the weight of the glory. God wants there, there to be such a weight of the glory that, that it's not us in control, it's Holy Spirit in control. Come on, because you could be so programmed, you could program Holy Spirit right out of church. <laughs> you could program the power of God right out of church. Come on, Holy Spirit wants to be in control of his house. It's his house. I said, it's his house. <laughs> I was in a meeting once in Florida, and I was standing there on a Sunday morning. And you know, I th you, know you think, you, you go into the old program thing, you know, you think Sunday morning service, going to be, you know, a little traditional service. And so I get up there, and I do my message, and then, you know, I pray a very dangerous prayer. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And my eyes were closed. You know, I was just going to pray a nice prayer over the congregation. Okay, did my message. Let's pray a nice prayer over the church. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, you know, the church was under construction, and they had, like, folding metal chairs and concrete floor. They were, like, redoing everything. And all of a sudden, I hear metal chairs flying. And I peek open one of my eyes. And I see bodies flipping backwards over chairs. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, 75% of the church was on the floor. No catchers, concrete. 
It was like a tornado of fire moved through the congregation. Like a tornado of fire shoom, just started going through the church. And I experienced this, this atmospheric change around my body. I could only get about 20 feet away from people. And about 20 feet away, bodies would be blown back through the air because of the manifest presence of God. How many want tornadoes of fire in your life? <sighs> Whirlwinds of glory. Whirlwinds of glory that just move around you and just, you know, make you like a walking bug zapper. I really believe we're called to be bug zappers. In New York in the summertime, we've got bug zappers. You know, we call them bug zappers. They're lights that hang out on the house. And it attracts all the bugs. And when the bug, you know, when the bugs come near, they get zapped. And they get fried. Smoke comes out. God wants you so possessed by the Holy Spirit that when anything of darkness or evil or sin or temptation or demonic or oppression, whenever it tries to come near you, before it get, can get on you, it gets zapped by the glory. Yeah, so that night, that day when that tornado came through the church, um, it was that weekend, you know, we had a good Friday night service and then we did a Saturday night meeting. And I'm in my hotel before the Saturday night service, and I'm getting ready for the meeting. Normally, I put on a different shirt each service. But for some reason that night, I decided I was going to wear the same shirt from the night before. I've never done it before or since, just that night. And I took the shirt out from Friday night from my closet, and I put it on. And when the shirt touched my body, a wave of God's glory went over me. And I screamed out in the hotel room, ah! <laughs> and my dad was in the room with me. He's like, Matt, what's wrong? I'm like, the, the anointing is still in the shirt from last night. I got touched by my own anointing. I said I should attend my meetings more often. But that anointing was residual in the clothes. Look, you can get so touched by the Holy Spirit, so filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies, that you have an anointed wardrobe. You got to open up your closet to decide what you want to wear, and the glory of God comes out of your closet and slays you out. How many want more of the oil of God on you? You just want, you know, because the anointing means to rub, to smear with oil, and you know, you get around the anointing, and, and it's like the Holy Spirit just smears the oil of God all over you. Hallelujah. That's what shepherds do with sheep. They put oil on the sheep so the flies can't land on them. The more oil you get on you, the, the less flies can get around you. And, you know, Beelzebub, that guy, you know, means Lord of the flies. So he's Lord of the flies, but you get oil on you, the flies can't come near you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You become like a walking light beam. I'll tell you, there's a glory in the room tonight. There's a glory here tonight. It's for a transference. I said it's for a transference. It's not just for a momentary touch. It's for a permanent impartation. It's for a permanent transference on your life. I'm not into momentary touches, you know, and then you leave the same way. I'm into permanent transformation where God puts something in you that you keep. I love, you know, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, 2 Kings 13, 21. I love it. It's one of my favorite scriptures. 2 Kings 13, 20. Oh, we're going to have fun tonight. Hallelujah. I'll loose the hoe anointing on you. You know what the hoe anointing is? 
Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and drink. Some of your minds went in a different direction. You got to get sanctified. 2 Kings 13, 21. <laughs> Elisha died. They buried him. Verse 21, a man was being buried. Such a man was seen coming, and the man was cast into Elisha's grave. And when the man being let down touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. It's the only time in Scripture a dead man raises a dead man back to life again. <laughs> Elisha had such a double portion of the anointing on his life that even his bones were anointed. That after his spirit was gone and his bones were in the grave, there was still a residual anointing in the bones. I'm telling you, you can become so possessed by the Holy Spirit that your bones are anointed. That you have a graveyard ministry. After you're dead and gone and you're in glory, someone walks by your grave and they get slain out just walking by your grave. Have you wondered why some people are anointed and others just aren't? Did you ever think to yourself, why can't God do that for me? As we draw near to God, Scripture promises He will draw near to us. And as we humble ourselves, God will increase the anointing. You never have to plateau in your spiritual growth. The Bible gives keys to continually grow in His presence. In this teaching series, you will learn the purpose of the anointing and how to specifically move in spiritual gifts. You will also learn how to discern the anointing and how to understand the gifts God has given you. For there are many gifts that God chooses to give us. Order Increase Your Anointing Today, a four-CD teaching set by Matt Sorger with your love gift of $30 or more. Also available online in MP3 format. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us at mattsorger.com. Matt Sorger Ministries is growing with you. Lives are being touched every day with the power of Jesus Christ through our mission work around the world and our television program, Power for Life. Your love and support means so much to us. Would you consider becoming a power partner with MSM? For only $30 a month, $1 a day, you will receive a monthly teaching from Matt on CD and MP3 and come under the ministry's prayer cover. You will also receive a 10% discount on all ministry resources and MSM hosted conferences. For $50 a month or more, you will receive an additional benefit, MSM's all-new premium online partner section, where you will have exclusive access to video conference volumes filled with powerful teachings from today's top Christian ministries. To become a monthly MSM Power Partner, please call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit mattsorger.com. Together, we're making a difference in people's lives around the world. And we say, Father, let the fire of God visit every single home watching. Watch us every week and you'll have power for life. Come on, people, give God a great shout tonight. Holy Spirit wants to possess us down to the very core of who we are, including our bones. Hallelujah. How many want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit? Possessed by the Holy Spirit. You know, it really is true. That's why I love to hang around anointed people. You hang around anointed people and their, their gifts, their faith, their what, whatever it is that God has put on them, you get around it and it does rub off on you. You, you, you become like whatever you hang around. The disciples were ordinary fishermen some were tax, you know, tax collector thrown in there, but, you know, a lot of them were fishermen. And the Pharisees, the religious scholars, could not comprehend or understand how these disciples, ordinary men, uneducated men, spoke with such power and authority. And in Acts 4, it says, oh, they got a revelation that they had been with Jesus. You see, because as they were hanging around Jesus, what was on Jesus got on them. Whatever you hang around is what you become like. So you hang around the anointing. That anointing will rub off on you. 
I learned this very young. It's one of the ways God mentored me in the spirit. I remember when I was young, um, there were different ministries that would come through and some were prophetic and some would flow in the Holy Spirit. And I just always, you know, one of the ways you can discern your spiritual DNA is, you know, when you get around a certain kind of anointing, does it cause something on the inside of you to get stirred up? Like if you're around a revival anointing or a prophetic anointing or a healing anointing, does something on the inside of you rise up and say, that's what I want? It's a good indication of the spiritual DNA that's on the inside of you. So I'd get around these different ministries, and I'd get so hungry for God. I remember going out to their resource table, mine every single thing on their resource table, just having bags of it. And back then, you know, I'd have my, my car, and it was tape cassette players in the car. I know young people, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Older people, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you probably still have a cassette player. No. <laughs> So I'd put those tapes in, and I'd be driving around as an 18-year-old, and I'd be listening to preaching, and I'd be listening to prophetic teaching and just constantly feeding my spirit with this. And there was a, without me even realizing it, I was being mentored in how to flow in the spirit. I was being mentored just by sitting under the teaching and being around it and hearing it and, and, and catching. Something in my spirit would catch that flow, catch that anointing, and I would crank it up really loud. And I like preachers who preach loud. And one night I pulled up to my house. I was living with my parents. And I pulled up into the driveway. It was like midnight. And my preaching in my car was turned up full blast. And I'm looking in my rearview mirror. And all of a sudden from behind me I see the little old lady across the street sticking her head out the front door of her house at midnight. And I'm thinking to myself, what is that lady looking out of her door for? What is she looking out of her door for at midnight? And then the next day, she called my mom. She said, is, is Maddie okay? She called me Maddie. Is Maddie okay? He was having a fight with someone in his car last night. I heard screaming coming from his car. That's how loud I had it turned up. She could hear it from inside of her house across the street. He was fighting with someone. And then my mom thought about it for a second. She's like, then she laughed. She's like, oh, no, that's just his preaching tapes. But hey, whatever you, you know, whatever you got to do to get around the anointing, it keeps it stirred up on the inside of you. Amen. <laughs> Come on now, church. We're going to get on fire. I mean, we're in Taiwan and they charge you, you know, in America. We're like, yeah, and everyone's like, Amen. Yeah, I want the glory. Amen. Yeah, I want the fire. Amen. Yeah, I want my bones to be anointed. Amen. <laughs> Give it to me, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Come on. How many want your bones anointed? I mean, you want to. I'm telling you, God wants to make you dangerous. Come on. Some Christians don't even want to get out of bed in the morning. They keep throwing the covers over their head. They're just living in misery, living in depression, living in defeat, living far below the place God has destined them to walk in as kings and priests. Stuck, defeated. Unrenewed minds, soul-driven. That's not how God wants you to be. He wants it to be when you wake up in the morning, you throw those covers off and your feet hit the floor and all of hell shakes. Your feet hit the floor and all of hell shakes and says, oh, no, they're awake. Oh, no, he's awake. Oh, no, she's awake. And there's a rumbling that goes out in the realm of the spirit. You get up and you say, God, what is my assignment for the kingdom today? What sickness am I going to see healed today? What person am I going to share Jesus with today? Lord, what revelation are you going to give me today? God, what kingdom assignment do you have on my life today? God wants us living on purpose. Look, we got to live our lives on purpose. 
Paul says, live purposefully, live accurately, discerning what the will of the Lord is making the most of the time. Live purposely, live accurately. You got to live life on purpose. You got to live, you got to make a choice tonight that you are going to start living your life on purpose. You're not just going to let life happen, but you're going to make a choice to maximize every moment God gives you for the glory of Jesus Christ. And if that means you got to start getting yourself up, shaking yourself off, sometimes you got to take your soul and shake your soul and say, soul, get with it. Amen. Because we are in a very strategic hour right now. Spiritually, very strategic hour. And the Lord is speaking to me in Joshua chapter 1. There's a word in my spirit tonight for you, and that word is release. Everybody say release. God wants to release you, he wants to empower you, he wants to send you, he wants to anoint you. I want you to get a revelation of the anointing that you already have living on the inside of you. God doesn't want you living pathetic. He wants you living prophetic. God doesn't want you living. I mean, some, some Christians, their lives are like soap operas. Oh, Jesus. They're just walking through life. Oh, God, I hate my life. They get up. They're just negative, complaining. Jesus, I hate my job. I hate my house. I hate my car. And that list can go on. <laughs> Jesus, would you rapture my mate? <laughs> just do a pre-rapture before the real rapture, God. You know, just take him quick. God, my job stinks. My house stinks. My kids stink. And they just walk through life. They walk through life. They walk through life tossed by every wind of the sea, every wave in the sea. They just toss, toss, back and forth, back and forth. God doesn't want you tossed around by the waves. He wants you walking on top of the water. I say, God, God wants you walking on top of the water. You are called to be a victorious believer, walking on top of the waves. Ha. Ha. Say it. Ha. I call it the ha ha anointing. You know what the ha ha anointing is? No matter what's going on in your life, you laugh at it. All of hell can be breaking loose against you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Devil hates it when you laugh at him. Ha ha ha. And you can laugh because you know that your God is seated on the throne. And when you love God, he will be sure to work all things for your good. No matter what it is. That's why you can trust. That's why you can have faith. That's why you can have peace. That's why you can have joy. Even when you don't understand what's going on, you know that God will still work it for your good. Ha. Ha. I pull on every unfulfilled word that has been hanging over your life, and I pull it down in Jesus' name. I call that thing forth in Jesus' name. I say, Lazarus, come forth in the name of Jesus. Have you wondered why some people are anointed and others just aren't? Did you ever think to yourself, why can't God do that for me? As we draw near to God, 
Scripture promises He will draw near to us, and as we humble ourselves, God will increase the anointing. You never have to plateau in your spiritual growth. The Bible gives keys to continually grow in His presence. In this teaching series, you will learn the purpose of the anointing and how to specifically move in spiritual gifts. You will also learn how to discern the anointing and how to understand the gifts God has given you. For there are many gifts that God chooses to give us. Order Increase Your Anointing Today, a four-CD teaching set by Matt Sorger with your love gift of $30 or more. Also available online in MP3 format. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us at mattsorger.com. February 7th to the 16th, Matt will have an extended trip in Hawaii. February 20th to the 23rd, Matt is at the Wagler Leadership Institute in Vernon Hills, Illinois. March 6th to the 8th, Matt is at the Spokane Healing Rooms in Spokane, Washington. Come experience the glory. I think God always wants us going from glory to glory. He wants us constantly going higher. He wants to constantly trust us with more of His presence, more of His power, more of that precious anointing on our lives. I've learned some things over the years in ministry about how to cultivate and increase that anointing. Through One of the ways that I've learned is through connecting, through associating what I connect my heart with, what I connect my life with, what I get around affects my life. It, it, it adds to the anointing that God has already entrusted to me. And one of the ways I've done that is through partnering. Ministries that I love, ministries that I love what God's doing, I love the anointing that's on that person, on that ministry, I will personally sow into that ministry. I'll, I'll partner with them on a monthly basis. I will connect myself on, in a consistent way. And through that association, I believe there's transference that happens. And transference is basically, it, it's just the moving from one place to another. So the anointing God has given one person, you can partake of that by connecting to it. You know, Jesus taught us, he said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So I connect my heart by investing my finances, my prayers, my time, my energy. So I encourage you today, one of the things that you can do to steward the anointing, the call, the purpose of God for your life is by strategically partnering with the anointing and with ministries who carry the anointing. So I encourage you today, Become a monthly power partner with MSM, with Matt Sorgan Ministries. You can sow $30 a month, $50 a month. We'll send you teachings every single month as a result of your partnership. And there's so many benefits of partnership. But I encourage you, make the choice today. Say, you know what? I want to connect with the anointing. I want to steward the anointing in my life. I'm going to partner with Matt Sorger and with what he's doing around the world. And I encourage you today, visit me on Facebook, on Twitter. I would love to connect with you more. In Jesus' name. We need your power for life.